Well, I have come to the end of my participation, and it's, it's great sharing with you. But at the same time, we have come to the end of the Bible. Um, this part is so important because it's not just uh, the Word of God, but it's the final words of God in the Old Testament. And now we'll, we'll jump to the New Testament. So before, like when we want to say the last words, we kind of choose the best words we want to say. And this is what we find in this passage. God is giving us words that are very important at the end of the Old Testament. And I'm sure that what, uh, God, uh, what God wants to share with us today um, is going to teach us so much. And it's going to help us through life in a great, great way. Malachi chapter 4, verses 1 through 6. Surely the day is coming, it will burn like a furnace. All the arrogant and every evildoer will be stubble, and the day that is coming will set them on fire, says the Lord Almighty. Not a root or a branch will be left to them. But for you who revere my name, the Son of Righteousness will rise with healing in its rays, and you will go out and frolic like well-fed calves. Then you will trample on the wicked. They will be ashes under the soles of your feet on the day when I act, says the Lord Almighty. Remember the law of my servant Moses, the decrees and laws I gave him at Horeb for all Israel. See, I will send the prophet Elijah to you before that great and dreadful day of the Lord comes. He will turn the hearts of the parents to their children, and the hearts of the children to their parents, or else I will come and strike the land with total destruction. Well, the Lord, in this last verses of the Old Testament, is He wants us to understand and He wants to be clear that human ways will always take us to destruction. <clears throat> and uh, that this was true then, and it continues to be true now. When the, um, the followers of Jesus asked him if divorce was okay, uh, Jesus said, well, Moses sent to, you know, allowed to give letters of divorce. But if we go to, to the beginning, Jesus always took us to the beginning because whatever God said in the beginning continues to be true up until the end. God knows our future before we go into it. And that's why we need God's counseling because God is, has already been where we're going to be. So it's, um, we have to understand that. In this passage, we learn three things that are very important. God is trying to tell us that there are, there are parallel universes, if we can call it like that. There is a universe <clears throat> or a way that God is going to lead with people that don't follow him and the way that he's going to deal with people that follow him. It doesn't matter how the world is right now. You know, there are parallel universes. You know, the people that don't um, honor God, they're going to have one kind of life. <clears throat> and the people that honor God, regardless of the situation, of the reality we're living right now, He will bless us. The same thing happened when God took Israel out of Egypt. So three things very important. One is... Um, parallel universes, while evildoers perish, uh, the righteous will rise. That's what God is saying. He says, don't even pay attention to what's happening to evildoers. I'm going to treat you different. Very important to understand that. It doesn't matter if the economy in your country goes sour. Well, God has a different economy for his people. Two, principles never fail, God says. If not, check Moses. Check what I said to Moses. Whatever I said to Moses continues to be true now. God is saying at the end of the Old Testament, like kind of telling us, people of New Testament, 
It's, 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 it's the same principles. And the third thing is the blessings of the next generation. Um, he cares about them. Um, God wants to make sure that the generations of the New Testament learn from how God used to treat his people um, in the old generations. So the blessing of the next generation is very important for God. Only for uh, a lot of pastors nowadays, the next generation is not so important. Uh, if you go to a church and all you see in those churches is old people, that means that church doesn't pay attention to the new generation. God wants us to pay attention to the new generation. They are the ones that are going to inherit whatever God gave us. And not just inherit it, but they are a generation they can, that they can take what we gave them and take it to a different level. So the Lord is saying, I want to bless the next generation. He says, I will return the hearts of you know, the children to their fathers and their fathers to the children. God uh, is a God. God is not a God, only a God of uh, personal relationships. God is a God of generations. He wants me to be responsible for the generation before me, my generation, and the generation after me. And that's what I try to do. Like, I brought my mother and my father to the Lord. I brought my brothers to the Lord. And here I am with, I have two children. I'm working with them. One of my children already has three children, and I'm making sure that they follow my paths, that my son follow my paths. And I think God will give me enough life so that I can uh, teach the children of my, the children's, children of my ch children. That way I can affect four generations. And that is very important. God uh, is, is interested in us uh, cloning ourselves in the next generation, especially if we were great service of the Lord, he wants us to clone, he wants me to clone myself in the next generation. So just pay attention to what I've shared and let's try to practice it. And, and this will just change your life. Well, as, as you have read, um, the last words of the Old Testament, the very end of the book connects us somehow with the Savior, um, connects us with the new generations. Also, God makes it very, very clear. You step away from principles, you will perish. Doesn't matter when. That never changes. Principles will never be old-fashioned. So those three things are very important that we remember, and we will just have a blessed life. I want you to pray with me. I want to invite you to do this prayer with me, especially if you've been kind of walking away from the Lord, or even if you've been a true Christian and you want to bring your relationship with the Lord to another level. Lord, I thank you for uh, the chance that you have given me to share uh, this preachings. Um, I bless this channel and uh, because of the fact that this channel is blessing so many lives all over the world. And Lord, the people that are praying this prayer with me and they want to uh, fix their relationship with you, forgive them, Lord. I'm sure, I'm sure you will. You're a forgiving God and bless their lives. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen.